Hey, what's going on, summoners? My name is Crumbs, and today we're going to be taking a look at 15 pay to lose skins. While Riot tries to make skins a purely cosmetic feature for the game, it unfortunately doesn't always work out that way. Usually, skins provide an unseen buff by offering less visual clarity for key abilities or attacks. This is why you usually see that players prefer things like Justicar Syndra or Project Ash when looking for an advantage. However, sometimes skins hurt you by giving the enemy a clear advantage. Whether it's giving them easy indicators to follow or letting them know key cooldowns, why would you ever put yourself at a disadvantage? Do you own any of these pay to lose skins? Let's see which skins will lose you the game by diving right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got to cover Arcade Riven. Riven offers a ton of skin diversity, and they are all pretty amazing. When it comes to this one, however, it ends up making you feel really clunky. The effects of this skin are pretty cool and are filled with lots of reference to other classic games. As a theme, this skin accomplished its goal really well. That being said, if you're looking to animation cancel your way to a higher rank, this skin really hurts you. Its general clunkiness not only feels bad to play with, but your usual animation cancels will feel really rough. If you do decide to stick with this skin, just make sure you practice your combos. Swapping between this and something like her base skin will feel really bad. Next on our list, we've got Nunu Bot. This skin is honestly pretty amazing because it does everything you would want out of a skin at this price. With unique dialogue and funny jokes, this dynamic duo really shows off with the skin. Unfortunately, some of their fun features work against them and really help the enemy. His E offers a visual indicator that shows them when it's going to root, and his ultimate quite literally gives them a countdown. It's also not doing Nunu any favors that his snowball makes a pretty loud noise when it comes on your screen with this skin. This skin is amazing, but if you're looking to win more games, maybe you should skip it, especially if you're an AP Nunu. Moving on to our next skin, we've got none other than Arcanist Kogma. This skin offers cool effects and displays Kog as a magical creature that uses arcane arts to deal damage. Unfortunately for Kogma, he doesn't know a good stealth spell, so a lot of his abilities have extremely visible indicators. Kog is constantly looking to be the long-range artillery for your team, and this is especially true if you're playing him as an AP caster. With this skin, the enemy gets a clear marker whenever you cast your ultimate, which can make it easy to dodge. Ironically, if you're looking to play Kogma as a mage, it's best to avoid this magical skin. Speaking of clear indicators, Super Galaxy Nidalee offers one of the brightest looking spears out of all her skins. While Nidalee is meant to be a huntress that can easily assassinate an enemy, it's hard to pull that off when they can easily see your highest damage ability. Pair this with the bright marker above their head when they're marked by your passive and you have a skin that'll scare away the enemy. If you're looking to snipe the opponent from afar, we recommend going for a skin with darker effects and a thinner spear. Before we continue on to our next pay to lose skin, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Up next, we've got none other than Primetime Draven. While this skin is pretty old, it's still regarded as one of Draven's worst skins. Sure, it has amazing chromas and pretty good effects, but it feels awful to play with. His axes have a very blunt and dull sound effect when you catch them, and it also feels like they'll randomly bounce to different locations. Plus, it's hard to see the indicator on the floor. Luckily, Draven has a ton of other skins for you to choose from that don't have any of these problems. While we're on the topic of visual clarity, let's talk about Project Vane. It has smooth animations, amazing visuals, and cool voice lines. Unfortunately, it does have a massive con in that you can't see most of your screen during your ultimate. When Vayne ults in this skin, you gain a mask over your screen to help simulate what Vayne is seeing, but this blocks a lot of your view. If you're looking to dodge abilities and kite enemies, the last thing you need is more visual noise on your screen. Moving on to our next skin, we've got Arclight Yorick. 
This skin has similar problems to the other Arclight skins, except of being pay to win, its bright details make it pay to lose. Usually, this series of skins offers hard to see abilities that can be game changing, like Varus's ultimate or Velkaz's Q. Unfortunately for Yorick, he doesn't have a key ability or really any ranged attacks. What he does have, however, is his little ghouls that deal damage to you and your minions. These ghouls usually blend in a bit with the background of the rift, especially during fights. With Arclight Yorick, though, they have bright yellow grave markers and glowing models as they attack the enemy. Next up, we've got Prestige Arcanist Zoe. You're all most likely familiar with her EDG counterpart, which is a great pay to win skin because it's hard to see the E and Q. Well, this skin is the literal opposite. Zoe wears bright gold clothing and her spells have bright visual indicators. Even if you end up dodging the bubble through the wall, usually people will accidentally step on it when they're not paying attention. However, with this skin, trust us, no one is going to miss the giant glowing yellow circle on the floor. Zoe's biggest benefit is sniping enemies and catching them off guard. If all of your abilities are really bright and easy to see, then it's going to be hard to get your job done. This skin is a great collector's piece, but maybe you should opt for a different skin if you're looking to climb. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite Pro Guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is your favorite League of Legends skin line? Personally, I think any of the Magic and D&D based skin lines are awesome. They really paint champions in a completely different light. But that's my take and we want to hear from you. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's dive right back into the video. Up next, we've got Spirit Blossom Ari. There are a lot of arguments to be made about this skin, especially with how smooth it feels to play it. Its great animations make it feel nice and borderline pay to win. However, it suffers from one major flaw, her ultimate. In this skin, it's really easy to tell when Ari is in her ultimate form. With her rework, it can be hard to count her ult charges to know when she runs out. However, this skin will give you a clear visual indicator that she still has an ultimate charge thanks to her glowing a pale blue. If you think the trade-off is worth it, then this skin can be pretty good overall. Next up, we've got Pulsefire Ezreal, which is regarded as one of the worst skins in the game. Ever since its release, Pulsefire Ezreal has had an awful reputation. It was one of the original ultimate skins, and for its hefty price, you'd expect a great skin. Unfortunately, this skin makes Ezreal feel extremely clunky to play and his abilities all feel much bigger. Ask any Ezreal main and they'll tell you that some of his cheapest skins are better than his ultimate skin. There was hope that the rework would revive this skin, but unfortunately, that just wasn't the case. At the very least, we can appreciate that it laid the foundation for what is expected from an ultimate skin. Save your money though and buy one of Ezreal's skins that are based off of his base model instead. Moving on to our next skin, we've got Infernal Karthus. Karthus is yet another champion that heavily relies on a single ability to deal most of their damage. Just like Nidalee, the harder his Q is to see, the better. Most of his skins offer vague hitboxes for his Q, which can make it easy to catch the enemy off guard. Unfortunately, this skin offers a solid outline of what the hitbox is. With a bit of movement speed, enemies can reactively dodge Infernal Karthus's Q thanks to the visual clarity. At the very least, it can be a bit hard to see his ultimate with this skin, not that it matters because dodging his ultimate is usually impossible at a moment's notice. Before we continue on to the end of the video, we want to say that climbing can be hard and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. And if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Taking us to our final few skins, we've got Arcade Caitlyn. Both her prestige and regular variations are honestly great skins. They have good sound effects with cool colors that reference other classic games. However, many of our Caitlyn mains out there know how important her traps are, especially the hidden turret traps. With Arcade Caitlyn, her traps have a glowing red cherry on top of them and are easier to see through the enemy turret. This makes it far easier to avoid the traps which can really stunt a lot of her early damage. Plus, her basic attacks and small combos can feel a little clunky compared to her base model. 
If you want a fun skin, this is great. Otherwise, we would avoid it at all costs. Speaking of being easy to see, we've got Omega Squad Vagar. Most of Vagar's skins offer vague hitboxes for his W, which can make it hard to see. This difficulty makes it easy to land a random W on enemies as they're forced to guess how big the damage range is. With Omega Squad Vagar, it draws out a box that shows where it will land. While the missile indicator effect looks cool, it gives the enemy an exact location of where the damage will hit. If you're looking for nice visual clarity for both you and the enemy, then you might like this skin. Next up, we've got High Noon Ash. This skin is honestly one of Ash's best skins due to how smooth it feels. It doesn't offer the broken indicators on her W or R like Project does, but it overall feels very fluid. That being said, don't forget, this is our pay to lose video. This skin transforms Ash when she casts her ultimate, which can be really dangerous in solo queue. When facing a champion like Samira or Draven, they can easily see that her ultimate is down and engage onto her. While it can technically work in your favor since you can bait the enemy into thinking you don't have ultimate, it just sucks that none of Ash's other skins do anything similar. This skin is great overall, but we recommend not trying to snipe someone with your ultimate across the map, or else you might die in lane. Last but certainly not least, we've got Star Guardian Lux. Lux has a ton of skins that offer a high pay to win factor, from Elementalist being hard to see, to Steel Legion having confusing animations. Star Guardian Lux, on the other hand, is a rare exception for her as it has really precise hitboxes and bright colors. This makes it easy to see the skill shot flying towards you and you can tell when you'll get hit or not. This is honestly how most of Lux's skins should be, but unfortunately, the standard is that she has a lack of visual clarity. Pick up one of her other skins so you can have an advantage. They look better than Star Guardian anyways. And that wraps up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.